so much uh, for being here. Um, I'll be presenting my paper on the legacies of armed conflict, uh, offering some insights uh, of the difference between stays and returning forced migrants. This work is co-authored with Carlos Vargas Silva, who's also at the University of Oxford. And just to sort of give you a, a way of how we motiv like what motivated us to do this study is that uh, when thinking about sort of the impacts of trust and violence uh, on, on uh, the, the impacts of conflict on trust and violence on attitudes, we typically do not necessarily think about where people were at the time of conflict uh, or the differences between refugees, uh, returnees, and stays. Uh, there's, in fact, a large literature exploring the impacts of armed conflict and violence on trust, reconciliation, and community engagement. But these attitudinal differences between individuals from same communities um, of origin that were located in different geographical countries or areas during the conflict is very much absent. Uh, and we argue that this is a major gap uh, in the literature as the end of conflict often involves the return of large numbers of refugees and internally displaced uh, persons to their community of origin. So that's very much what sort of is behind what we want to understand here. In this paper, what we do is um, we, we want to look at these differences in views and attitudes because we know that this can have long-term implications uh, not only for peace building, nation building, but also for economic performance, right? We know that trust and the sentiments of reconciliation and, and sort of all these dimensions that are part of large uh, social capital are quite important not only for um, sort of economic development, but also sort of the, the, the peace process itself. So what we do in this paper, and, and this paper is very much a descriptive paper, uh, we, we are documenting the differences in indicators of trust, reconciliation, and community engagement between those that stayed in their communities of origin during the conflict, what we call the stays, and those who were displaced both internally and internationally, and returned over time, so the returnees. So we're going to talk about the returnees, but then we're going to also make the difference between the uh, internally displaced and the internationally displaced. And we're going to in explore the differential impact of violence exposure for each of the groups. Uh, and what we do here is we're going to use data collected in Burundi, which, as many of you know, has been a conflict-affected country that has experienced large levels of displacement and return. Uh, so the way we sort of started thinking about the framework of this paper was in terms of bringing, the, there's not a, like a unifying literature that we could find that would explain the differences between, in attitudes between, refugee, between returnees and stays, but we went and sort of look at the literature in trust, reconciliation, and community engagement. And we find that in the trust literature, we know that personal experience can have major impacts on individuals' inclinations to trust others. Uh, uh, the work of Alessina, for example, has shown that traumatic events are associated with lower levels of trust. Uh, and in this context, if we think about stays, for example, they have to protect their, their limited resources during the war and may have or may form different notions of trust as a result. But on the other hand, the returnees had to escape conflict, adopt a life elsewhere, sometimes even growing up there and returning home, and many forced to return home. Um, so they could also develop dif different attitudes and notions of trust, and there could be even a difference between the internationally displaced and the internally displaced. Now, the literature in reconciliation has shown that, ex uh, that experiencing violence can lead to cause for further violence, right? Those that have been more exposed to conflict have greater levels of distrust, uh, security concerns and resentment, but there's been other sets of studies that in fact show that greater exposure for uh, violence has led to greater support for peace. Um, so in that sense, greater experience for, um, of violence um, makes them more aware of its actual costs and more likely uh, to uh, favor options to avoid it. But then again, what's the role of displacement and return and how can we understand those differences in here? And finally, in terms of community engagement, exposure to violence also often leads to more pro-social behavior, as been found in the literature, including community engagement. However, most of the findings have pointed at that increase in pro-social behavior tending to be towards uh, one's own identity group. So 
Uh, there's been also some evidence that stays in returnees may see each other as outgroup members. So we've done some work on, on, on this area for Burundi, and this could potentially be expanded to internal and international returnees seeing each other as outgroup members. So what we do in this paper is we look at Burundi, which is a country that has three very important characteristics for, for this kind of study that we wanted to do which is a country that experienced substantial internal as well as international displacement and return. And then it allows us to compare the two groups with those that stayed. Uh, the volume of repatriation in Burundi was substantial relative to the size of the country's population. And a large portion of those that were displaced spent a substantial amount of time away from their home uh, communities. So this time away, we argue, may have been conducive to the development of differences in trust, reconciliation, and community engagement. Whether this is only specific to Burundi, obviously sort of our results speak very much to the case of Burundi, but there are other countries which also have had these three characteristics and for which their results could be relevant. If you think about Afghanistan, Somalia, or South Sudan. So this is just to give you a sense of, of, of the number of people displaced uh, during um, the conflict in Burundi in 1993 was the peak of displacement. Then by, 2000, by the end of 2014, most people had returned home. We see then in 2015 a new wave of displacement, and, and I'll get back to that because we're not going to get into that part in, in the study, but it can be relevant to our findings. So we collected data uh, during January and March of 2015. Uh, these, um, we, have we interviewed 15 households um, uh, in, in 100 communities across the 17 provinces of, of the country. Now, the person providing the information, trust, reconciliation, and community involvement was the household head. So our analysis is going to be at the household level. Uh, but there's also uh, the, the, um, information from local leaders which were interviewed in each community. Um, this, this is just to geographically give you a sense of all the communities that were interviewed. And I, I'm going to quickly show you some of the, uh, the, the questions that we use. What the question of trust was to rank one to five, the extent to which the, per, uh, the person or the head of the household trusted the following people or institutions. So we ask about community leaders, ex-combatants, other ethnic groups, others in the community, or veterans. In terms of reconciliation, we gave three statements, one being, I feel justice has been done to those who committed crimes during the war. I feel reconciled with the atrocities that I experienced during the war. And I feel the, reoc the reoccurrence of conflict in Burundi is a real danger. Again, this was ranked to one, from one to five as to how much they agreed. And we reordered so that values would indicate more reconciliation. And our question on community engagement was a variable indicating that at least one household member is a member of a group or organization, right? And we included a couple, couple different organizations that were, that, that were re relevant in that sense. So let, let me just um, move to the estimation. Uh, we conducted the analysis in two steps. First, we look again at, at, at the household level, the measures of, of, of trust, community engagement, uh, and then we, we looked at we looked at the, um, at, at, the at the differences between stays and internally displaced and, and the refugees, right? So we're interested on the coefficients beta one and beta two. Uh, we control for the number of land disputes that the household had, the number of people killed in the household, and uh, for some household um, specific characteristics. And then in the second step, we, we add some interactions. So we're interested in beta 5, beta 6, and beta, beta 7, and beta 8, which is the interactions with these measures of land disputes and number of people killed um, in the household during the conflict as a sort of exposure to, 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 to conflict. Uh, we included control variables at the household level, including age, primary location, whether the household was female-led, um, and so on. So I'm going to, uh, the, 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 I just realized that I, this is my first presentation since the pandemic started in person, and uh, you tend to forget that these are not necessarily the best way to present the results. Uh, but um, I'll walk you through, through the, the, the results. So these are the results in terms of um, the differences between stays, IDPs, and returnees in trust levels. And what we find is that uh, the, the, 
internal returnees tend to have lower levels of trust compared to the stays. Right? As for the international returnees, these are negative, but they're statistically significant. And then in the second panel, we have so, the uh, Isabel, you have two minutes left. In the second panel, we have the interactions with violence, and then we, uh, I'll talk about the finding in there in a minute, but that we find a, a, a positive likelihood of, of um, uh, having higher levels of trust for international returnees and international and internal returnees. Now, our results in terms of uh, violence and reconciliation always also show that it is the internal returnees the one driving the negative uh, sort of the negative uh, levels in here. So the, the, the negative results. So the internal returnees are more likely to 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 think that the justice has not been done, or that or that um, are less reconciled with the war atrocities. And they're also less likely to um, uh, belong to uh, different organizations compared to the, um, the states or compared to international uh, returnees and the states. So I just have a couple of few minutes, but just to talk to you a little bit about the robustness tests, we, we also included some control for pre-war conditions. We had collected data in 2011, so we knew pre-war land hectares that we, we had asked and education level of the household head. So we control for these and the results sort of are very much constant. So just sort of to wrap up my results in my um, probably one minute left, uh, what we find is that international returnees have significantly lower levels of trust, reconciliation and community engagement than stays, whereas the difference with the international returnees and stays is mostly insignificant. And greater exposure to violence has a more positive effect on trust for returnees compared to stays, but a negative effect on community engagement. Um, now, I, I, I show you, uh, I won't take too much, but, but uh, the relation with the um, new wave of displacement, we collected this data right before the new wave of displacement ha happened in Burundi. And there could be potential differences that can make it interesting to, to study this case. Uh, I won't have to, uh, not now time to go into that, but there's been interesting dynamics that we're seeing with the previous conflict, and, uh, and this would be something that we're sort of posing in our paper, that it would be, it, it would be important to, to try to understand what is going on here in terms of these attitudinal differences. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Today.